Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video, having a look at what's going on in the tropical Atlantic for today's first video, all eyes on Hurricane Irma, which is now just into the north of Cuba and will be bearing down on Florida uh, over the weekend. Um, we've also got two other hurricanes that we're going to have a look at as well, Katia and uh, Jose, so um, a lot going on for today's first uh, video, but the of course, the main um, emphasis is going to be on uh, Hurricane Irma uh, once again. Uh, later on today, we'll have a look at the month head look ahead with Japanese and CFSV2 models. So uh, come back for that uh, later on this afternoon. But we'll get on with the first video, which I say is looking at the uh, situation in the tropics. This is the latest satellite image uh, from NOAA 4. Uh, Hurricane Irma, you can see the eye of the storm uh, is just there, and it's just to uh, the northeast of Cuba, so uh, this is Cuba, of course, uh, just here, uh, and you can see that the eye is sitting just to the northeast of Cuba, uh, the storm is affecting particularly eastern and northeastern parts of uh, the island and still affecting parts of uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti uh, over here. Of course, got Florida up here, which is, at the moment is staying out of trouble, but this hurricane is heading up in that direction in the uh, coming couple of days. Right, so this is the latest from the National Hurricane Centre, uh, updated a uh, very short uh, time ago. So three areas of interest uh, still. We've got, of course, uh, Hurricane Irma, which is uh, sitting just there, as I said, just to the northeast of Cuba. They've got Katia over here, uh, just off the coast of Mexico. And we've got Jose, Hurricane Jose is sitting uh, just there. So we better deal with these hurricanes one by one. Katia, first of all, and uh, this is the latest position of Katia and where it's forecast to go. So at the moment, Katia is sitting just there out in the Gulf of Mexico, off the coast of Mexico. Of course, um, low overnight, Mexico had an earthquake. Now we've got a uh, Category 1 hurricane heading in from the Gulf of Mexico, so they're having uh, a real um, bad time of it at the moment in uh, Mexico. So that's where a catcher is at the moment. By 1am uh, on Saturday, it's heading on to the east coast of uh, Mexico, just there. And then by Saturday afternoon, it's pushing inland into Mexico, by which time it's rapidly starting to weaken. Now, as catcher gets onto the coast of Mexico, it might go up to a Category 2 uh, hurricane very briefly, and then it'll go back down to Category 1. And then it will rapidly decay into a tropical uh, storm and then a tropical depression. But of course, it's going to bring huge amounts of rain and some very strong uh, winds with it. So there will be the risk of some flooding from Katia in that central part of Mexico uh, over the weekend. Then we've got Hurricane Jose, which is currently Category 3 uh, hurricane. And uh, that's sitting in the middle of the tropical Atlantic as well. That's getting very close. We talked about this um, yesterday, getting very close to some of these eastern Caribbean islands. So uh, we're going to be watching out what that's doing um, in terms of uh, Hurricane and Jose as it gets very close over the weekend and start next week to these areas that are currently being or currently have been or currently are or have been uh, affected by uh, Hurricane Irma. Uh, so Jose is a currently Category 3 uh, hurricane, major hurricane. Uh, over the weekend, it's likely to go down to Category 2, uh, and then probably start of next week, it'll be down to a Category uh, 1 as it heads up uh, to the east of the Bahamas, which, of course, are just there. So that might give a swipe of uh, more severe weather to parts of the Eastern Caribbean uh, over the weekend and into the start of next week. And then we've got Hurricane Irma, and its latest position is uh, just there. That's where Hurricane Irma is right now, just to the northeast of Cuba, and also affecting the Bahamas as well. Uh, so between sort of the Bahamas and Cuba, uh, essentially. It's a Category 4 hurricane, at the moment, it has gone down a category from five to four. It's likely to stay as a category four right way up to Florida. So this is the forecast track of um, uh, over the coming few days. Uh, that's where it's going to be by uh, Saturday afternoon, again, to the north 
of Cuba and then into Sunday. That's when it uh, t- makes its turn northwards and hits Florida. As I say, it's Category 4. It's gone down a category, but Category 4 hurricane is still really, really quite severe. And uh, what you get with that, I can tell you what a Category 4 means. So it means that you get maximum sustained winds of 155 miles uh, per hour. And gusts of wind, I think they can go up to around 180 uh, miles an hour. The central pressure is uh, 925 uh, millibars. As I said, this is likely to sustain as a Category 4 hurricane uh, right the way up to Florida. So it probably won't go down any further. So it means a very major hurricane is going to be hitting Florida uh, over the um, weekend. As I say, this is the track of uh, uh, of Irma into Florida by the time we get through to Sunday and then pushing northwards through Monday into Tuesday, getting up in towards Georgia, South Carolina, uh, those sort of areas. And then going further north, probably finishing up around Kentucky, somewhere like that, and tending to uh, die out as it begins to uh, push up to there. Right, get rid of that and uh, that. And we shall go on and have a look at the GFS forecast. So, this is from website tropicaltidbits.com. This is the latest uh, GFS uh, forecast. Uh, And the latest position of Hurricane Irma, of course, it is sitting just there, just to the north east of uh, Cuba. There's our other two hurricanes, by the way, so that's Katia just there, and that's Jose uh, over there. Let's run through and see what the GFS is forecasting over the uh, coming few days. So uh, we go through to 6 o'clock in the morning on Saturday when uh, Hurricane Irma is to the north of uh, Cuba, giving a real battering to Cuba and to the Bahamas as well. Then we go through into uh, the early hours of Sunday. It begins to make its turn northwards. So by 6 o'clock in the morning on Sunday, there it is beginning to head in towards uh, Florida. Moving through the course of Sunday, well, very severe storm, quite obviously, is pushing northwards into Florida. As I say, it's expected to stay as a Category 4 hurricane right way into Florida, I don't think it's totally out of the question, but this might go up to Category 5 again. There's very warm uh, sea surface temperatures uh, around this part of the Caribbean at the moment. I say at the the moment, it looks like it's going to be a Category 4. I wouldn't rule out the chance that it might go back up to Category 5 by the time it hits Florida. But where it's Category 4, where it's Category 5, it is going to be a very severe hit on Florida uh, producing severe winds, uh, I'd say up to a f- at least 155 miles an hour sustained with a Category 4, and no doubt copious amounts of rain and storm surges as well. Uh, Irma then carries on northwards through the course of Monday, it's leaving Florida, heading up towards Georgia and going up to the South Carolina area as well, and then carries on pushing northwards, and there's its position by the end of Tuesday, so sort of Tennessee, possibly getting up towards Kentucky, uh, that sort of area. You notice now it's rapidly starting to weaken. It's up to 993 millibars. Still a tropical depression, but it would be rapidly weakening. I've been asked by quite a few people whether the UK and Europe is going to be seeing uh, Hurricane Irma. So we'll just carry on running on. And you can see that by the time you get through to Wednesday, uh, obviously it's rapidly uh, decaying across that uh, inland part of Eastern America. So the answer to that is that no, we won't be directly seeing uh, the effects of Hurricane Irma. Um, you notice know, that some precipitation, some energy is leaving the eastern seaboard uh, into the second half next week. So that's kind of like little bits and pieces of what's left of Hurricane Irma heading off in towards the uh, Atlantic Ocean. And uh, an area of low pressure is forming there around Newfoundland. Now, whether or not that uh, actually contains the remains of Hurricane Irma is a mute point. It probably does contain some of the humidity from Hurricane Irma. And, of course, if that low pressure was to get caught up in the jet stream head that way, then you could make an argument, say, that we have seen the effects of Hurricane Irma. But I think what people have in mind when they ask whether we're going to see Hurricane Irma is whether we're going to see a direct area of low pressure uh, that was Hurricane Irma. So if you cast your mind back to 1986 when we had the remains of Hurricane Charlie over that holiday weekend, that was a direct sort of remains of 
Hurricane Charlie, but we have that bank holiday. We're not going to see that kind of thing from Irma. But this low pressure moving into the Northern Atlantic here, uh, as we go towards the middle part of September, it might contain some elements from uh, Hurricane Irma. So not really getting a hit from Irma, but yes, we might see uh, some sort of humid rain band, that kind of thing. Uh, from Hurricane Irma. We've gone to um, middle part of September, by the way, Saturday 16th, and uh, you see it's still got things going on in the tropics. Got an area of low pressure there, got another one over towards Mexico, there's one down here. So the tropics remain alive, uh, very much so, into the middle part of September, and we won't be out of the woods um, with this hurricane season, I don't think, until we get through into the last stages of October into November. Even then, we could arguably still get some uh, quite intense storms even into uh, November. That was all GFS output. What about the uh, ECWF? So, uh, again, we're going to have a look at the uh, latest position of uh, Hurricane Irma. There it is. Uh, so, just to the northeast of Cuba, there's Catcher over there. There's Jose uh, just there. We run through with this. So, uh, by midnight on Saturday, um, very much a battering for Cuba and parts of the Bahamas from uh, Hurricane Irma. And then we get the curve north. This is midnight Sunday. Uh, we're just beginning to head towards the southern tip of Florida. By uh, midnight on Monday, yes, Irma um, is unleashing her fury on Florida. There it is as the Category 4 hurricane. I say wouldn't totally rule out chance of a Category 5, going back up to Category 5 again. Um, but certainly Category 4 hurricane battering uh, Florida there on Sunday. And then into Monday and Tuesday, Irma um, uh, pushes north into Georgia and the South Carolinas, where it rapidly uh, starts to uh, die a death across the Carolinas, parts of Tennessee, possibly up towards Kentucky as well. Still producing a lot of very wet weather. And at that point, we've got Jose just here, not all that far from the uh, eastern Caribbean. Jose looks like he just about stays away from the Caribbean, but it might give uh, a bit of a battering to the Bahamas. Again, that's where we finish up on day 10 with the position of Jose just there. Uh, looks like something's happening over towards the western coast of Mexico and Pacific there. And that's probably storm or hurricane Lee forming in the tropical Atlantic uh, just there. Let's have a close-up look on America with GFS and ECMDF finally. So this is how uh, GFS from WetSense.D is picking things up on uh, 6 o'clock in the evening on Saturday. That just down there is uh, Hurricane Irma to the north of Cuba and beginning to threaten the southern tip of uh, Florida. We'll push through so by the time we get through to um we've gone to six o'clock in the morning on sunday yes there's uh um, very much heading into the sub tip of florida and then this latest run of the gfs model is pushing um and north was through the central swathe of florida that looks like a very devastating hit from hurricane Irma on florida on Sunday. This has gone to uh, 6 o'clock in the morning on Monday, where uh, very much a case of Irma centred over the top of Florida. There'd be severe winds. As I say, we might be seeing gusts of up to uh, 180 miles an hour, sustained winds of 150 miles an hour, very severe conditions, and trench amounts of rain too. Uh, moving through to uh, many of the 11, 6 o'clock in the evening, where um, then is leaving Florida and heading up in towards Georgia and uh, the South uh, Carolina area. But don't get through to Wednesday, just a shallow depression sort of left across the eastern part of America things looking uh, much calmer then this is the rainfall predicted from the GFS model so obviously that is Irma just there at six o'clock in the evening on Saturday there it comes pushing northwards by six o'clock in the morning on Sunday heading into the southern tip of Fo uh, Florida very torrential rain with that as well you can actually make out the eye of the hurricane uh, on this uh, chart so that blue area just there within the center of the purple that is the eye of 
uh, Hurricane Irma, where the rain is easing off temporarily within the centre of the storm. So this is uh, 6 o'clock in the evening on Sunday, but uh, much of uh, Florida being covered by torrential rain, particularly so down in the south with both severe winds as well. And then into 6 o'clock in the morning on Monday, the life-threatening storm pushes northwards through Florida and heads up in towards Georgia, uh, just there, and South Carolina, just there. Notice, still very, very torrential rain, even at this point, as uh, Irma leaves Florida and pushes into the southeastern part of uh, the states. Into Tuesday and Wednesday, very rapid weakening of Hurricane Irma, then down to, first of all, a uh, tropical storm, then a tropical depression, and then just a trough of low pressure by the time you get through to the middle part of uh, next week, finally, the East End of the UF, that's um, just there at uh, midnight tonight. It'll be just to the north of Cuba at that point. It pushes northwards to the southern tip of Florida uh, at midnight on Sunday. And then it's through Sunday that this very severe storm pushes northwards uh, into uh, Florida. So that situation at midnight on Monday, Irma centred over top of Florida, bringing the eye of the storm through the central swathe of Florida. The exact position of the eye is moving about a little bit. Some uh, model runs have it running up this eastern coast of Florida, just offshore. Um, so it's still a little uh, while to tweak this, but both models at the moment, GFS ECM, are going for a direct hit on Florida from the Category 4 Hurricane Irma. By the time you get through to Tuesday, Irma is leaving Florida and heading up into Georgia, where it's rapidly dying away. By Wednesday, just left with a shallow trough of low pressure there across the eastern inland part of America. So this is looking very severe. Of course, it could be life-threatening uh, weather. We've got life-threatening weather at the moment down in the Caribbean course have already been fatalities unfortunately from uh, um, as well as mass devastation through uh, parts of the Caribbean and this weather now is heading up towards America so it all begins to uh, kick off for Florida uh, overnight Saturday into sunny things will get worse through the course of Sunday really severe conditions for Florida over the uh, weekend on Sunday and into the start of next week. It will be life-threatening weather. We've got uh, winds sustained of up to 150 miles an hour. Uh, and if it goes up to Category 5 again, uh, which doesn't look like it's going to, but it's a possibility. Uh, if it goes up beyond Category 4, then the winds will be even worse. The rain is going to be very severe as well with uh, severe flooding. And, of course, there will be a storm surge with this as well. So life-threatening conditions heading into Florida over the weekend. Right, we'll be doing January Friday later on, uh, coming back to the UK's weather and having a detailed look at weather, well, the weather for the next month with the Japanese and CFS B2 models. Come back to that. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.